Hey everybody, it's Eric from Square Bear Studio, and here's a hopefully quick guide to uh, getting the appearance of speed or slowness, fast or quick, I should say, speed is either, uh, in your animations. And so the rule of speed in animation is that time divided by distance equals speed. The amount of time it takes something to move from point A to point B will determine its speed. So let's see that in action. I'm just going to come out one second to frame 24 and I'm going to move our little friend the green ball to the other side of the screen and I'm going to click play. So reasonably fast. What if we wanted that to go twice as fast? Well there's two ways. One we could move it twice as far but it would be going out of the screen that we can see here. Let's make it go twice as fast by cutting the number of frames it takes to get to the other side of the screen in half. So we're at 24, 24 divided by 2, 12, bring that to 12. And now that is way faster. Let's say we wanted it to go a quarter of a second. I'll just move those to 6. Look how fast that is. So that is uh, time divided by distance equals speed. Let me come out and show you slow, just so you get it. So if it took a second to only go halfway across the screen, it would go half as fast. There we go. See? Slower. And I could even change that to even less distance traveled in a second. There we go. So that's how you achieve the illusion of speed and animation. It's the amount of time it takes and the distance the object travels equals how fast it appears to be going. Okay, so let's look at another concept in animation which is spacing and spacing is how close together the drawings how far the drawing has moved from frame to frame so i'll come back out to frame 24 and again i'm going to move our little friend all the way across the screen so that's taking that long and let's look at the spacing on that. Let me just come out about halfway. I'll turn on my onion skins. Turn off those ones. And I'll just show you the previous keyframes. I'm just turning on an onion skin for the previous uh, one, two, three, four, five, six uh, frames. So each one of these, as they get lighter, it's an earlier frame. So you can see that's very evenly spaced because I'm set to linear, but they're you know, a little bit apart as you travel. So that's giving an illusion of speed. Let me go ahead and show you what happens if I just move, like I doubled the speed before, I'm going to move these back to 12. Now look at how far spaced apart they are. That difference in spacing is what equals speed. So if I move that out slower, faster really fast ultra fast they're not even overlapping at this point like that so that is spacing so the closer together the two drawings are from one frame to the next the slower it appears to be moving and the further apart, the faster it appears to be moving. So let's see how that applies to a bouncing ball. And we're going to use the Bezier curves to get even more clever with our spacing. Because we're going to have our spacing change up. I've been set to linear. And uh, that means the spacing stays the same for every single frame. So let's do a real quick ball bounce. So I'll just uh, come out. I'll start there. I'll go to, to frame 8, let's say. Drag it down till it hits that video safe line. I'll use that as my ground. Keep 
keep that on linear. And uh, that took eight to go out, so it won't take eight to go back up because it's only going about half the way. I'm on frame eight, let's say six. So I'll come out to 14. I'll bring it back up about halfway that it traveled. And then I'll come about six more out to 20 and drop it again. And you really do want this high point and the bounce to be dead center between the two ball strikes. It gives you a nice even feel. Now the problem is right now this is all in linear, or it will be in a second. There. And I'm just going to go ahead and set a keyframe on one. It hasn't moved. So now it's bouncing. It's bouncing really badly. It's got it's totally linear. It is just uh, got no life to it and no reality either. As the ball bounces, it speeds as it approaches the ground, speeds up, but starts to slow as gravity grabs it. So when it gets as high as it can, it's slowed down because the gravity is dragging it. And so it speeds, it starts slow and then picks up speed until it hits again. And from there it would bounce up again. So let's make this look more like a real ball using Bezier. So I'm going to select those four frames. I'm going to right click and switch them to Bezier. Now I'm going to go to my motion graph and there it is. I've just double click on this little selected bone translation icon. And it was linear. So you can see it's really straight lines between each keyframe. And those straight lines say, you know, the spacing stays the same. And so again, let's look at this motion graph, or the spacing using the motion graph. So you can see that the spacing is very even going down. And so I'm going to use my, uh, my uh, Bezier curves to alter the spacing. Now, the more curved the line is, the closer together the spacing gets. So let me just, we're on frame one. I'm just going to grab this handle and I'm going to curve it. Do you see? Look at that. They're getting really uh, close together. And you can see that they start to space more as they go down. That's because it's curved near the top, but much straighter near the bottom. And I can actually speed that even more towards the bottom by just pulling that. And you can see the spacing change. And there it is, a view from the bottom. So you can see at the top, they're quite tightly uh, spaced, and then it really opens up towards the bottom. That gives the illusion of speed. Let's watch that. So the first part of the bounce now looks better. So what I'll do is I'll come to the bottom now we want that bottom to hit and bounce up quickly. So a nice sharp point is pretty good. So you want a nice V down here and I've got a pretty good one. I can come back and adjust that. And coming back up, let me turn these off. In fact, I'm going to one, two, three, four, five. I'm going to go to the six frames four, go to onion skins and uh, make them relative. So they move with my mouse like that. So as you can see, as I come back up, it's pretty evenly spaced coming back up. Now it should be fast and slowing as it approaches the top. So I'm just going to grab that. And you can see now that the spacing has totally changed. It's much faster at the beginning of the bounce and slows as it hits the top. But it's still too even on this line because it's a straight line. So I'm just going to go ahead and turn that into a U, upside down U kind of curve. And so again, you can see that spacing. And this actually, there's a very slight curve. Let me make it bigger. As I bring that in, you can see that's getting closer together towards the bottom, which means it's slowing in. Now a ball doesn't do that. A ball accelerates until it hits. So I actually need to make that kind of straighter pointing out and now I've got a really slow out and then the spacing really picks up towards 
uh, the final hit. So let me turn off that. And that's a much better bounce. And that's how spacing uh, can give you that. And that's how you can use the uh, motion graph with Bezier curves to get a really good visual of how your spacing is looking. So the more curved the line is, uh, the more curved an area is, the slower it moves and the more straight it is or up and down, uh, the faster it's moving. So I hope you found that helpful. Um, feel free to ask questions and thanks for listening.